Okay, it's a lovely day today and I'm going to get you up and running with Amiga games through Retrobat. So a lot of people out there find Amiga very tricky to emulate, especially if you're going to be putting it through a front end such as Retrobat. Don't fear, just Jamie is here. <laughs> so let's get into this. So obviously you're going to need Retrobat installed. If you've not heard of Retrobat, check out my Retrobat playlist. I've got a lot of content on there to get you up and running. Okay, so let's go to the shortcut, right click on the shortcut and open the file location. From here, you're going to see bat GUI. Open this one and this will open up a new window and we go to system list. And then at the top of system list, we're going to see system. If you just left click on that, that's going to open up all the systems that Retrobat caters for. So in my circumstance, I'm going to search for Amiga 500. I've got my Alien Free game on the desktop and that's going to be running fine on Amiga 500 model. Now the format I've got for my extension is a .LHA which is also a WHD load format game. So let me tell you by far, you don't need to mess around with .ADF files and disk swapping that type of thing. These .LHAs, WHD loads, they're kind of compressing all of these different disks for a particular game into one package so you don't need to swap disks you don't need to do this you don't need to do that so under extensions you need to make sure that you've got dev dot lha on there which i do which is cool so you also see this has got dot hdf so that's a very common file extension for amiga games okay so once we've got that sorted out and we don't need to alter anything here i'm going to close this and close my back GUI. Now, since we're in the RetroBat directory, we've got a BIOS folder. Now, I can't stress this enough. Head over to Amiga Forever and grab your Kickstart ROMs from there. Amiga Forever is a superb package, almost like a dedicated front end for Amiga gaming, and it's superb. It's how I got my Kickstart ROMs for this. So, I've got my Kickstart ROMs in a folder here, and what I'm going to do is uh, these are considered BIOS files, I suppose. I'm gonna just highlight all my kickstarts and I'm gonna drag and drop these into my Retrobat BIOS folder as so. So close that down and so let's back out of here. Now, like I was saying, I've got my game just here, which is my regular testing game for Amiga. Uh, this is Alien 3, great game, uh, bad film, well, whatever. We're gonna go to ROMs folder now now you're going to see several different Amigas just here. So Amiga 500, Amiga 1200, Amiga 4000 are the very common Amiga systems of the day. Now you can drag your game into any one of these and it's pretty much going to give you that same icon. So, you know, whatever, I'm going to just open up Amiga 500 and I'm going to drag and drop my Alien 3 inside here. And that's it. That is it. So let's open up Retrobat now, as usual. We just double left click on the XE. And before I go any further, can I just ask that you hit notifications and also subscribe if you like this tutorial video. It really helps my channel. So let's get back on with this. So we just opened up Retrobat. If we scroll along, we can now see Amiga. It says Games 1, which is obviously the Alien 3 game I've just popped in. So open this one up and we got Alien 3. Now, by default, if you just open this up for the first time, it's going to go into WinUAE. And WinUAE, for a lot of people, is your absolute worst nightmare. It truly is a thing that nightmares are made of. But whatever, what we're going to do is make this a lot easier. If I press select on my controller, this is, or whichever button you're using to get into the view options window, if we just go to advanced system options under emulator, it will likely boot up WinUAE and you'll see a window pop up. I'm going to just show you this. So WinUAE and I'm going to open this one up. So you'll likely get something like this or you'll get WinUAE itself, the interface come up, which is like I say, just keep away from it from now and you're going to end up with all this stuff. And by the way, whilst I see it, Aros just here, that's a free kickstart ROM that comes with WinUAE these days. So. To be honest, it's not that great and um, you're better off with the kickstart ROMs from Amiga Forever. So let's just press hot buttons and get out of this. Okay, so as I was saying, if we go to view options, advanced system options, 
emulator, the one I'm going to recommend for you is Libretro P-U-A-E. Just select that and back out. Now let's open up Alien 3 again. Now it will say from time to time kickstart ROM not found. And there you go, with just a few little presses on your controller, you're gonna get inside it just as so, like I've done. And you're also gonna see this really nice looking bezel around it, the Amiga 500. So as you can see, this is working fine and there's no sound on it, I've disabled sounds for this tutorial. Okay, something I'm gonna show you whilst I'm in this gameplay and whilst I'm on this screen. To get a virtual keyboard up for the Amiga, all I'm gonna do is press select on my controller and it's gonna bring up a virtual keyboard. Now, the reason I say this is because I know a lot of Amiga games are gonna require uh, keyboard inputs. So, press select on your controller and this brings it up. And this pretty much emulates the Amiga keyboard. So, that's that good to go. And obviously, you just scroll over to whichever button it's asking for, key rather it's asking for. Just highlight it and just X. Okie dopes. So let's do some fine tuning to this. If I press select again on my controller, open up view options, advanced system options. This is going to be the part where I teach you how to make your game look really good. So first things first, shader set. So shader set is filters. From here, we can choose things like scan lines, which I know a lot of people like, which gives you that effect of a very old school scan line across the TV. So that's up to you to play around with, but there's some really, really nice filters in here or known as shader sets. If we go to decorations, as you can see, we got all the bezels here. So just a minute ago, I mentioned the Amiga 500 bezels. I'm gonna just check this one out. I'm gonna just select ambience vintage tv just select that let's back out back into alien 3 look at that <laughs> now i gotta say this looks like a 1950s maybe 1960s tv don't quite go with amiga But as you can see, it does its job and it does it pretty well too. So let's back out of this one. And if you ever struggle to close down using your hotkeys, all I do is press Control, Alt and Delete all together on my keyboard. And if I go to Task Manager, we can see Retro Arch just here, which is what's powering this game. If we just highlight that and go to End Task, and voila, cool beans. So let's look at some more fine adjustments. So let's go back into view options, advanced system options, get rid of that vintage TV for now, and I'm gonna just select none. So I'm gonna go and show you game aspect ratio. So most Amiga games are gonna be four by three, like a lot of these old school games were designed for. So we can stretch this to a 16 by nine widescreen image, but to do this, we're gonna need none on decorations, which is your bezels. So let's test this out. We got game aspect ratio, 16 by nine. We back out of here and go back into Alien 3. And there we go. And if you heard that click, that's obviously the emulator, emulating the sound of the disk drive, which I love. I, I think it's a really nice little touch. And there we go. So if you put it into the 16 by 9 it's obviously stretching out the original image, which was actually designed for that uh, small 4 by 3 ratio. But it plays well, and we can fine tune this as well. So rather than it be look, looking so pixelated, it's like it is right now, if we back out of this again. So let's once again open up view options by pressing select, advanced system options. So let's tidy up that widescreen pixelated image. If we go to integer scaling, put on. Something else I'm gonna show you is if we go down to internal resolution, I'm gonna bump this one up to the highest resolution on my laptop is 1440p. Let's open this game up again. So as you can see by switching to the settings I've just used, it's slightly compressed it, a small image, but it's really brought out the fine details and it's not so pixelated.
So there you go, that's a lot better and it's a full screen as well. Now under video, you're gonna find lots of different video settings here, which you can experiment with yourself. The ones to take note of is the CRT screen output and the CRT screen resolution, also the format. So just check those out. Remember, if it don't look good, all we can do, if, it, if you don't like what you've selected, is just simply go back to it and just press on auto and that'll bring you back to how it originally looked. So another one which is going to smooth up the pixelated image is if you go to visual rendering, smooth games by linear filtering, if we press on on this, and whilst we're in visual rendering, go to color depth and we can change the colors in this. So by auto, it's going to be selected. I'm going to go to 24 bit, back out of this, let's open Alien 3 once more. As you can see, certainly on my OLED screen, I can see a big difference there. So that's up to you to select that option. If we look at Ripley as well, we'll notice that the textures look a bit different on her arms in particular. So check those options out for sure. Right, so let's sort out that problem with the BIOS file, keep coming up the Kickstart file. So let's exit out of Amiga, and we need to find what Retrobat, or the emulator itself, the core rather, it accepts. So you might have some Kickstart ROM files with a different name convention, but these need to match what Retrobat and the core expects to see. So to do this, we're gonna press start. So we're in the main menu, we go to game settings, and if we just scroll down, missing BIOS check. And this is gonna tell you all the missing BIOS files that Retrobat isn't seeing. But for this, we're gonna go down to Amiga and just here we can see it, that's the kickstart file which keeps popping up. So once you've got your kickstart files from Amiga Forever, it's just a simple case of renaming that particular file in the same way as you can see right here. And that's pretty much it, and that problem will just go away. So let me just show you very briefly how we rename the kickstart ROMs to match what Retrobat is asking for. So just highlight on the shortcut, always the easiest way to locate the default directory of where you've installed things. Open file location. Now remember, I dragged and dropped my kickstart ROM files into the BIOS folder. If we just go down here, this is obviously my list of kickstart ROM files. Now, some of these are a bit over the place. I've used these for different projects I'm working on, for different tutorials I've done in the past. Uh, they're just a complete mess. But we need to rename, say for example, the A1200 file to what it says, which I've already taken a photo of. And I suggest you do the same thing. When that pops up, just take a photo of it. And what you're gonna do is just right click on that kickstart and you'll be able to loosely recognize which one it's asking for. It's just a case of literally right clicking on it, show more options and rename. So just delete everything there you don't need, and then just rename it exactly how it says on, well, like I say, it's, I've taken a photo of it. So just rename it, and remember capital letters are very important for that. So that's it for my Amiga Retrobat Setup Guide 2023. As always, I'm always asking my followers, my subscribers across all different social platforms to tell me what it is you want. Um, anything really is there a system you want to see a setup guide on I'm on Facebook Instagram TikTok, and Twitter so be sure to join me on those I'm able to do personalized setup guides for little nitpicky little guides really so if there's anything in particular something very specific you're having issues with drop a comment or head over to my buy me a coffee page but until next time stay retro